If you're going to try to heat your greenhouse during the winter time, the first thing that you've got to figure out is how much heat are you going to need? Now, of course, that depends on three things. The first one is how cold your winters are. And the second one is how big your greenhouse is. And the third one is the surface area of your greenhouse, the transparency and all of the things that are exposed to the air, what that is made out of. Now where I'm at, it is, uh, I think they call it zone 7, and what that means is the coldest time in the winter, you'd expect it to get, you know, zero Fahrenheit, and sometimes, on occasion, for a few days, it might get as much as 20 below zero, 10 below zero, something like that. So that's the kind of cold winters that I'm looking at right here, is those possibilities. Now, as far as the second factor goes, how large is your greenhouse? Well, for my example here, my greenhouse is about 1,000 square feet. And that includes the windows and so forth and the uh, overhead uh, transparencies. Now, the third thing is in my greenhouse, for my example here, is uh, what is the covering made out of? Now, my covering is a hard polycarbonate covering. And I wanted to have a, a more insulation than that. So as you can see here, I've got some plastic, flexible plastic, that I, it's greenhouse plastic, that I just stapled on the underside. Now mine is a stick frame built greenhouse, and so that's kind of how I had to do it. Now you can also build a hoop house, which you can buy greenhouse plastic for, and just basically you drape it over the hoop. You can get it in single layer, or you can do it in double layer. And there's an advantage to doing a double layer. And the advantage is you get about twice the insulation value. Typically, the insulation in R values, on a single layer plastic anything, unless you get the uh, commercial uh, triple or double pane kind of things, if you get a single layer of any kind of plastic, or glass for that matter, the R value is approximately one. Now, if you put two layers together where you've got an airspace in between them, the R value goes up to about 2. Now, it doesn't do more than that. I know some people might think, well, I've got that air in there, and air is a very poor insulator. That's true. But unless you fill that inside with something to stop the air from circulating around in there, you lose that uh, tremendous insulation value of the air. And you'll only get an R value of about 2, maybe a little bit better than that. Okay, let's go through a real example here. Now supposing, the first thing you've got to do obviously is find the surface area of your greenhouse. Now suppose you have a hoop house, something like this. The first thing you've got to do is measure how much surface area you have. Now let's take the one side, the covering first. What you do is you go from side to side on the ground and over the top. And in this case we measured 30 feet. Okay. Now, then what we've got to do is measure how long the greenhouse is. And in our case, we measured 40 feet. Okay, now you, you multiply those two together, 30 by 40 gives you 1,200 feet. Now, don't forget we've got two end walls. Now, the two end walls, you know, in this case, uh, you see the wooden uh, border on the bottom there. Now, that part of that end wall was very well insulated. But just to keep things simple, let's assume the whole wall on both sides is just uh, one layer of plastic of some kind. Okay, so we're going to assume that what we've got here is about 200 square feet per side, and that's uh, another 400 square feet. So that's going to give us a total of 1,600 square feet. Okay, now, here's what, that, well, here's what happens when you put all that together. Now you see from this diagram, heat is going to go from the uh, inside to the outside. Now the inside is the hot side, and the outside is the cold side. Now, supposing it was 60 degrees on the inside, and it's 40 degrees on the outside. Now what we want to do is figure out, well, how much heat are we losing right now as the heat flows through this wall, this single layer of plastic? Okay, now, the heat transfer through that wall depends on three things. The surface area that we have, 
the difference in the temperature between the inside and the outside and the R value of the insulation that we have. Now, one thing that I have found out is that the R value, like I said before, of a single layer of plastic or glass or just about any simple thing like that is 1. So in this example, let's use 1. So here we go with 1,600 square feet and R value 1 and a temperature difference of 20 degrees. If we put the mathematics together, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, that comes out to 32,000 BTUs per hour. That's how much heat, in this instance, is flowing through that wall. So you come up with 32,000 BTUs per hour. Now that sounds like a lot, and it is, it is, but let's convert that to something that's uh, a little more easy to understand for a lot of us. Let's convert it to watts, because everybody knows what a 60 watt light bulb in the old days used to look like and those kind of things. So 32,000 BTUs per hour, you divide that by 3.41, that'll convert it to watts. And what you end up with, I think, is 9,300, 9,400 watts, basically, if you round some stuff off. And let's, for practical purposes, let's round it off even a little more so we can work with it. We'll call it 10,000 watts. So that amount of heat going through the walls is about 10,000 watts, steady state. So if you want to heat your greenhouse and keep it at 20 degree differential all night, what you're going to have to do is get a heater and put it in the greenhouse that will put out about 10,000 watts. Now how much is that going to cost you to do that? Well, uh, it, when the sun comes up and the sun goes down in the wintertime, if you live where I live, the practical uh, amount of sunlight you get is about five, six hours in the dead of winter. So you get about 15, 14 hours of nighttime, so to speak. It's not really dark, but you're not getting any sun to solar. But let's really be optimistic here, just so we can work with the numbers. Let's say 10 hours. So 10 hours at uh, 10,000 watts, you're going to get 100 kilowatt hours out of that. Now, if you're uh, paying 10 cents a kilowatt hour, which is fairly cheap for electricity, I mean, there are areas in the country where that's what it costs. It might cost a little more in your area, but you can use the numbers here. So 10 cents a kilowatt hour, 100 kilowatt hours, you're going to pay about, you know, 10 bucks a night for that kind of heat if you're using electric heat. If you're using gas or propane or something like that, it might be a little bit less, it might be a little bit more. But you're looking in the ballpark of 10, 15, 5 bucks, somewhere in that range a night to heat your greenhouse if you do it that way. Now, for a lot of us, you know, just say 10 bucks 30 days in a month, that's going to be 300 bucks a month. See, that's a pretty stiff bill to pay. And, and it's probably going to be a little more than that or a little bit less than that. But you're in that ballpark, 300 bucks a month. Now, what you can do to make that a little bit better is, remember I talked about R values and, and the, the uh, different, uh, you know, single layer and uh, double layer. If you double the layer, you put the R value up to 2 in our calculations, and everything goes in half. In other words, instead of 32,000 BTUs per hour, you're going to get 16,000 BTUs per hour. If you do the arithmetic on that, you know, that's going to come down to about 4,500, you know, 5,000 watts, basically, of heat that you're going to need. If you do the arithmetic on that, instead of 300, you're going to have 150 bucks in that range. So, now that's about what you can do to heat the, to insulate the greenhouse with conventional means, it is not a very expensive. Now there are better materials that you can buy, like I said, the commercial triple pane and double pane, plane, little plastic windows that have the triple panes and things built right into them. They do a little bit uh, better than uh, an R value of two and so forth, especially if you use two layers of those. But they're pretty pricey. I'm just talking about things like that. But if you want to use that and uh, price it out and see what kind of R value you can get, you can use this little mathematical drill that I've laid out and figure out what's going to cost you to heat it if that's what you want to do. Okay, to summarize, the heat input from whatever heat source you're using has to be at least equal to the heat loss or your greenhouse will get colder than you want it to. Now, a couple of things are fixed value. Once your greenhouse is all completed and it's built and you're done you know, doing all your construction and so forth, 
the R value is fixed and also the surface area how much you have how many square feet is exposed to the outside air that is fixed so you can't mess with those anymore but what you can mess with is the heat source it's not just a matter of plugging in an electric heater or a gas heater you can get a lot more creative than that and uh, get the cost down even more and we'll talk about that next time